Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are not familiar with this lovely lady with me tonight, this is Beth Elderkin. She and her husband, or husband-to-be soon. Husband-to-be, yes. Yeah, to <laughs> uh, do a wonderful little series called Shark Jumping. You want to plug that for the, our listeners here? Well, yes, dear listener, listeners and viewers. Uh, about a couple times every month, uh, my fiancé Tim and I do a review series called Shark Jumping where we look at different TV shows to find out when they, quote, jump the shark. So it just gives us a chance to talk about some of our favorite TV shows, some that we love to hate, and just have a fun chat about it. It's like the Heroes one. Oh, yes. That's that's one of my favorite ones. God just because... damn it! <laughs> That show in the first season was, like, so good. And then just after, it just completely went off the rails. It was like, you know, it was like the, the, the first three months of a relationship, that mm -hmm. first season of Heroes. It was like, oh, everything's great and going good. And then you move in together and everything gets fucking weird. Yeah, and also, you know, you have Strikes and SAG and WGA and all those lovely people. What the hell happened to Heroes? Well, <laughs> um... Uh, I want to thank you for helping me out tonight uh, with, uh, with Tara Down and such. Got my Red Bull. <laughs> past my bedtime. <laughs> I think you might need something a little bit stronger in the other direction after, because this is not a, a happy, happy kind of show. So I've heard. Yes, I'm very excited to to <laughs> see what underground weirdness we uncover yeah, you, over the course of the next indeterminate amount of time you're not going to be happy when this is over no one ever is oh all right uh, well you know happiness is relative so okay let's play the intro each week Catherine and the radio dead air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible shit bring it back here we'll send what we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and since you're brand new to this nonsense uh, Beth, I thought, uh, I had two options. We could just ease you into it, or we could just go the, the, the full Monty of crazy, and I decided on the mm. latter option. Um, so, uh, we're, we're gonna begin in Florida this week. Yay! That's my favorite state for bad things to happen! <laughs> Never heard anyone say Shout that. out to Florida! So we, we've had on this show all sorts of wonderful nonsense that pertains to drive throughs uh, We've had people try to pay for their drive, recently tried to pay for their food with heroin. No, 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 meth. They tried to pay with meth. Um, they, they've tried to get into the drive through They tried to jump into the window. But, you know, never underestimate people's ability to um, find new and bizarre ways. I'll just send you the link there to um, put a spin on the whole drive through thing. Oh, I can see by the uh, description already, this is going to be fascinating. Man accused of tossing gator. We are off on the right foot. Into there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> gator wasn't on the menu, but one did make an appearance inside of a Wendy's just east of Loxahatchee in Royal Palm Beach, Florida. And it wasn't by choice. A Jupiter man, that's Jupiter, Florida, not space, but I could see how you'd be confused, audience. Jupiter man threw it through the wind restaurant's drive through window, according to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. It happened in October. Suspected suspect was just taken into custody. Officials say 23-year-old Joshua James pulled up for his order after a server handed him a drink. And turned around, James reached into the back of his truck and tossed the three and a half foot gator through the drive through window. Why did he have such a big alligator? Well, apparently he <laughs> found it. This, this, I'm not making this up. He's driving along. He finds an alligator by the side of the road, which that does happen quite often in Florida. It's not okay. even like, a, it's not even like a joke. Those things are every fucking where. He finds an alligator, he puts it in his truck, he goes to Wendy's, and he thinks, hey, this goes here. <laughs> Insert here and get free food. What no. is his goal? <laughs> I'm, do you know, alligators are not legal tender, as far as, as I, I know. We're, we're not on, like, a barter system. Was he trying to intimidate him to get free food, or was he hoping, like, the alligator would just kind of grab the food and then, you know, like... 
do like a hit and run, just like go, go, go. And he jumps back in the car and they have like awesome person gator alligator adventures. Go Wally, get it, get it, fetch boy. That's not fetch Wally, what are you doing? <laughs> that's not, that. that's a felony Wally, stop that right now. That's. Oh. But see, he has, a per he has a perfect excuse. You know, if the alligator starts, you know, biting on some people, you know, oh, it wasn't his fault. He just threw the alligator. He's an innocent bystander. <laughs> Look, I'm not responsible for this alligator, your honor. I found this alligator. I went to Wendy's. The alligator is not my alligator. Henceforth, I should be let go. I was just trying to give it a home, you know, give it some food. It was clearly hungry. Uh, you, You're welcome, world. You got it. I feel sorry for the alligator. I really do. Because this poor creature is just living its life as best it could in Florida. Some jackass throws him into the bed of a pickup truck and then into a Wendy's, which if I'm an alligator, a Wendy's kitchen is probably pretty low on places I want to see in my- well, To be fair, uh, living life best you can in Florida is not very easy in general, so. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they really are. I used to, I lived in Florida for a year. I lived oh, in Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, I know. Yeah. Um, and I had an apartment that had this little like man-made pond type thing behind it. And it was full of alligators. There was even a sign, which I'm paraphrasing. There was a sign that says, don't go near this water, you fucking idiot. They're fucking alligators. Wait, why were there al why were there alligators like right next to your house? Right behind my I could look out. Wait, why? I could <laughs> look out of my sliding glass doors and there are alligators. Why? Because it's Florida and there are alligators. That's just how it is down there. That doesn't seem like a thing that should be a thing. It, and yet, well, that's, you just summed up most of the mentality of Florida. Does not seem like it should be a thing, is a thing. All right. Oh, we have, we have far more and more Florida. Oh, God. <gasps> yay! No, this is not, this is definitely not a yay. Oh, Florida oh. Mobetta. So, I really don't know how to sum this one up. This is just awful. Oh. Fortunately, and, and fortunately, just like with most of the stories we do, no one was hurt, thank God. But this is just, this motherfucker right here, I, I think it's the best intro we have. This motherfucker right here, Fort Pierce, Florida. Man flashes fake badge, demands oral sex. Officer questions the man, he responds, I don't like you. I don't like him either. Man is facing charges for claiming to be a police officer and demanding oral sex from a woman at the Lucky Seven Food Mart. Um. Uh, oh. oh God. I, yes, I know. Oh, and it says he was poking a woman in the chest. I'm like, poking her with what? <laughs> oh, that's not something I want to answer. Please don't answer that in the comments. Uh. Police say uh, he waved a woman over to his car, offered her $20 for oral sex. When she refused, he told her that he was a police officer and he was going to take her to jail if she did not give him oral sex. Now, I'm not a legal expert, but I'm pretty sure there's no suck it or jail clause in, in any state or federal penal statutes at all. I, I, I don't... I See, I find it really funny, like, the whole progression of the story is, like, the, he, he waved her over and was like, I'll pay you for oral sex, and then she says no, and then he's like, well, I'm a police officer, I'll take you to jail, but he wasn't, you know, he didn't try to hold do the whole runaround of, you know, well, I see you might have something on your possession, or maybe I smell marijuana on your breath. He was just like, well, if you won't take money for it, I'll just take you to jail instead. <laughs> Yeah, he, th th that escalated not a quickly. Well plan. No, not a, and and it gets even better. Um, when investigators asked Runyon why he was in the area and where he was working, uh, he said, "I am invoking my Fifth Amendment right, and we are done talking. I don't like you." <laughs> I don't think that's how. <laughs> that's not how that works. You can't just plead the fifth because someone irritates you. Well, I mean, he can plead the Fifth Amendment for he can sure. plead the for any reason. Sure, but I don't think he needs to give a reason. <laughs> I mean, that's just like twisting the knife. This poor officer has to come and take care of this poor situation. He's like, you know, not only do you have to take me to jail for impersonating one of your fellow officers and trying to get oral sex, but also I just don't like your personality. 
<laughs> or just something about you just puts you know puts me off the wrong no, way. Just, you know that guy has hurt feelings. I just oh my god, th th this was I mean, this was a plan. Is what is what's this was his surefire plan. Was it a plan or was it like a plan that he found he found a badge and like five minutes later, like, you know what? I can get some serious strange from this thing. Let's go try it out. Oh, wait, this didn't work. Now I'm going to jail and I don't like the officer. It's a, just whatever happened to romance is all I'm saying. You know, yeah. whatever happened to asking someone out? You ever tried, you know, maybe OK Cupid? No, you, you just go into impersonating an officer. Oh, come okay. on. Did you look at all look right. at his face. If you if you're on Tinder and you see that, what direction are you gonna swipe? Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's like fair. seriously. That's fair. Uh, yeah, okay. Maybe he's got a great person out. Oh, wait, no, 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 not. It's got that's really doesn't have anything to go on there. Yeah. Oh, I got my cat. Want to meet one of my cats? Oh hey, yeah. hello this cat. Is, this is Bender, aka Bender the Wonder Cat. He has made appearances in our videos because he's very fat, and so we can make him do whatever we want. <laughs> hey Bender. I'll let you go now. Go away. Mine, mine apparently hates me. Every time I start talking, he gets like as far away as possible from me. It's not about him. No, Mike, our, we have three cats. Yes. <laughs> uh, one of them, she just skitters away all the time. It just takes some time to get to know you. Well, he's. Uh, <laughs> damn it. I have the food, you little shit. The one thing you have to understand about cats is there's no such thing as instant gratification. You, yeah. you have them. Most of the things are going to take a really long time if they ever happen. Well, I'm moving right along. We've, we've had a remarkably mild winter up here, strangely, mm -hmm. even though New Mexico got snow when we didn't. Um, and uh, they, they are quite, uh, even further north of us. They had a remarkably mild winter. And I understand they have these winter festivals. It's a tradition. It's stuff they do. But there's one aspect of it that has always probably been a bad idea and finally has bitten them in the butt. This comes to us from Wisconsin. Let me send this along. Oh, Wisconsin. Cars. Is it involving cheese? No. No. Though probably there were some somewhere nearby. It's Whoopsie daisy. Cars accidentally fall into water in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Oh, there's multiple cars. Multiple. So one car. Oh, that's a lot. Nope. There's a whole bunch. Um, the first line of this article. Who wrote this? All right. It's just the w, WGN web desk. The first line of this article is probably a little. The first line is, this is why you don't park on the lake. Well, that is true. That is why you don't park on a lake, because you will lose your car. Several cars took the plunge, literally. In Lake Geneva, after falling through the lake during the city's annual Winterfest. Can cars take a plunge metaphorically? <laughs> like, I know I, I can take a plunge if I'm, like, going for, like, you know, if I'm going out with somebody or I go for a job interview. But I don't think cars have that kind of agency. Not yet. Google's working on it. I think they it. just plunge or they don't. Google's working on it. We got the self-driving cars, so they're, they're, they're well, soon. But, yeah, you're right. Not yet. Okay, uh, and then... And then Skynet, and then they'll take us over, <laughs> and then they'll, yeah. you know, then end of, end of all mankind. You and missed it. We had a story a while world. back where a, a self-driving car tried to run a guy over. Um, I love it. Uh, the cars were all parked on the ice for the big event when they started to fall through the ice. No one was in the cars at the time. And all the cars had been pulled out of the water, though some suffered water damage in the engine and the interiors. Why would you ever park... On the lake. Well, you know, parking spots are hard to come by. Clearly, there's a festival going on nearby. If you look at that Fox 6 News photo, you know, there's a, a, an event. Parking's limited. But you got to do what you can. On the you know, street parking is like a dollar an hour. Who's got quarters? No one has quarters anymore. On the lake. I would think of all the places I could possibly park my car, probably the bottom of the list would be on the lake. Because it's it's a solid dependent entirely on temperature. Mm -hmm. There, There's no, you know, it's not built. There's no layers of, of solid stone and then asphalt. No, no. There's this little layer 
of a temperature dependent solid and then just water. Mm hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm wondering if it was because of the temperature or if it was because of the number of cars. I'm wondering if it was just a couple cars and they were more evenly distributed, then they would have been okay. It's like the more cars, the more cracking. Either way, it's a bad plan. It's like, oh, we'll just park in the lake. It'll be fine. No, it won't. It won't ever be fine. That's that's not where your car goes. I mean, that's just like, that's a Wisconsin version of just like parking in the woods or, you know, double parking. You know, it's just an alternative. They're doing what they can. Yeah, but the double parking thing is kind of a dick move. But at least that won't result in your car floating away. Oh, can you imagine, like, coming outside, like, you went to a restaurant, you had, like, a, you know, nice meal, hanging out with friends, you come outside, your car is, like, half submerged, you're like, because you can't really go, oh, no, because you're like, you go, oh, oh, yeah, I probably Ouch. had some responsibility for yeah. that. My decisions were partly responsible. You know, th th there are, t today, there are insurance agents at Geico, State Farm, all this place, somewhere... In all of these offices, someone just it was on the phone, exploded into laughter, and no one else in the office understands why. <laughs> and they didn't have to pay for a thing. <laughs> no, that's not covered. No. That's not covered. No. No. <laughs> nope. Did it, did it roll into the lake? No, it was, it was parked on it okay. for several hours in the Sad. day. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you fuck off. Thank you. I'm like, I'm terrified enough of just walking on a frozen lake. Like, I can't imagine, like, parking, like, a several ton vehicle. Ne nonetheless, like, I... like, one of the final cars drove in the area where, like, there are about 30 cars in here. You know what? 31, not going to make a big difference. I'm a southern transplant. I'm scared of walking on ice on a sidewalk at all. Whenever a, a, a patch of ice shows up, I'm suddenly, like walking very slowly. I look like I've, I'm clenching for some reason, just like, I don't want to fall down. I can't even... see, I'm, I'm from California, so like, just ice in general just terrifies me. They talk about black ice, and I'm like, oh god. No. It just sounds ominous. No, I don't, I don't drive if it's snowing. So, all right, so moving right along, this one kind of went a little bit everywhere. Um, it's the year of the monkey. In in, Chi in the Chinese New Year, I think I think I know where this one's going. Yeah, because you've probably already seen this. Lots of people <laughs> have already seen this, this one. Um, and, but I didn't look at it closely. A S a San Francisco designer tried a minimalist uh, poster for the 2016 Year of the Monkey, and uh, minimalism it's a perfectly valid style. However, you you might want to add just a little bit more detail. I think we'll call this one um that's not a monkey. <laughs> but uh, what is it is the more pertinent question. That's a butt. I I'm, I'm sorry, that's a butt. <laughs> that's that's a butt. That's that's the bottom part's a butt. The top part is something else. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <sighs> something. Yeah, I it's Minimalist design is great when it works, but sometimes the results can leave themselves open to interpretation. Oh, oh, wide open for interpretation. Oh. Really? Did you want to use that phrasing? Who wrote oh, this? Is, that, okay, see, as, as someone who has been in journalism for a very long time, and I worked in local news for a couple years at first, whenever you can make a stupid-ass joke that just makes you feel so good inside, you will do it no matter what. Because, like, you... because. Every single day, you're going to have all the, well, you know, this organization is having this event. And these kids, you know, they raised money for a charity. And then you have Monkey that looks like something inside something else. And you're just like, all right, my day is complete. I now have purpose. Uh, in the case of San Francisco designer Liu Zhang, quickly assembled poster idea for the Chinese Zodiac's Year of the Monkey, ended up looking a bit more like something raunchy. It's not mince words. It looks like a penis going into a butt. And I don't know, maybe shaking up side to side. I'm not making, that's not me. That's, that's in the actual article. 
<laughs> Someone is having a great time. Oh, ad, ad week, ad week gets some props from me. My God, how did you not? How did this is a little Freudian, I think. It's shaking a bit. <laughs> That just created a whole new visual experience in in, in oh. these eyes that should not be there. How did he? How? <laughs> it's it's that peach color, and then there's the the just it. That's not a monkey, man. That is so not a monkey. I'm just like I'm really curious what the line is, the single dot, and then just the little the little shape at the bottom, like. I can understand the arms or ears or whatever those are supposed to be. I think that's supposed to be the nose and that sort of lip divide thing that chimps have. <gasps> oh, now I'm seeing it. Now, I thought it was like that was like the monkey's whole body and that were his little arms. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, that it's supposed to be. It's, it's the, the negative space creates the head of the monkey. The negative space needed a damn outline. Yes, it did. A little did. bit of the color differentiation, but it needed a damn outline. Because now we got year of the butt fucking. <laughs> I'm sorry, you take that to China, people are gonna look at it and go, I didn't know butt fucking was on the Zodiac. Did anyone, did we change it? Did, did anyone, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know that that's new. We got an update there. Uh, Zodiac calls for a good year. <laughs> look, there's something I said. <laughs> even, even doing my ridiculous shows and stuff I do, there are quite often, I will take a script for something and I'll go to somebody else and I'll say, does this look okay? Just to be on the safe side. <laughs> it's called getting a second opinion. Yeah, and really, you know, don't, Especially if you're going for like a big promotional thing, get a second opinion before you run with something because otherwise you end up with this. Yes. This, this is, oh, God. Oh, uh, that brings nude meaning to the term butt monkey. <laughs> Year of the butt monkey. Now we have a title for the week. There we go. Yep. Um, so we have. Uh, why did these things keep fucking happening? This is New Zealand for our next one. Mm. Because it's something we like to call history repeating itself. Who? Uh, we actually have a ta I don't know if you saw when I, I posted this. Someone actually went through and tallied all the times each horrible thing is keep, keeps fucking happening. There's like really? a scoreboard. It's ridiculous. This is one for the scoreboard because we keep having... <sighs> we keep having people pooping where they shouldn't. Not accidentally, quite deliberately, pooping where they shouldn't, and it's mm, it's mm. it's often referred to as mystery pooping. And yet again, we have yet another headline, although a little bit of a twist here: mystery pool pooper set to be revealed. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's that's more important than the taco at Taco Bell. Security camera footage is set to reveal the person who deliberately defecated in the middle March swimming pool, forcing it to close. Middle oh my March. god, I want to know everything about this story. <laughs> they, it's not just that somebody defecated in a pool. I don't care about that. It's the mystery. Because it's like, like, can we can we make a making making a defecator like? The next Netflix I, it's, <laughs> I'm, wait, show. I'm waiting for the parlor room scene. You know, the, the, the classic Agatha Christie. I first suspected the pooper. You know, it's... it's, 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 it's just, <laughs> the fun, Thank you, monsieur. I love, I love, oh God, the quote here. The final incident was, quote, a deliberate attack and was disappointing. Disappointing how? I oh I, um, I don't know and I don't want to know. I'm glad they didn't <laughs> elaborate on that detail. The third, okay, the third one. On January 28th, a person defecated, quote, a large amount in the deep end of the pool. Who is this? Who is this? Is this their hobby? Is the who is this fun for? 
Who wakes up, goes to work, end of the day, comes home and goes, well, time to go poop in a pool. How is how is this un how is this fun? Is this unwinding for someone? You know. Well, I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? But not in a pool. Not in the public pools, pool. Pools are very relaxing. No. You know they do water births now. You know, <laughs> different kind of births. <laughs> BM kid in the chat says, "Welcome to our pool." Notice there's no... Oh, come on, Steve! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I feel like such a grown-up today. Yeah, we get the... What? Uh, this is in a major newspaper. Had to type the headline, Mystery Pool Pooper. <laughs> Who wrote this? Is, do we have... It's just like the... the, pre, the no, no, no byline on this one. I can't imagine why. Oh, I'm tracing it. I'm going into the original. Oh, they don't have it. Yeah. No one wanted to take, no one wanted this in their portfolio, I nope. suppose. That is not going on the LinkedIn page. When you got into journalism, did you, you know, you go in, you're thinking, I'm going to write some stories, crack some cases, change the world. What do you mean, mystery pool pooper? What? No. Are you no. saying this doesn't change the world as we know it? This is a big mystery. I really want to find out who this is, and this does not affect me in any way. <laughs> you want to know? This, you want to know I this guy's story? Know. Why did you do it, sir? Man answers. Okay, our last story comes from the UK, and oh, this is just... Oh my god. Is it Florida again? No, it's the UK. Uh, um, no, 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 it isn't. It's from the. It's from America. It's just reported by the UK. Where did this come from? Uh, Wisconsin. Okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense. All right. All Double right. Wisconsin. The couple in this next story get bonus points for being drunk and not driving home themselves. So they get points for that. However. They immediately go into negative points because their designated driver was their nine-year-old son. <laughs> Couple got so <laughs> drunk, they allowed nine-year-old to drive them home. I just want to hear that conversation. Okay. That sounds like the best chat ever. Jimmy, Jimmy, come here. Come here, Jimmy. Look. Mommy and I, we're not feeling so good. And do you want do you want to eat some Cheerios, Jimmy? Well, the Cheerios are at home, Jimmy. I need you. I need, can you? You're big boy now, right, Jimmy? You're big boy now, right? Oh God, Jimmy, you gotta take us home, Jimmy. You gotta take us home, Jimmy. Don't forget to lift your mother into the car. She's passed out. Yeah. A mother and her boyfriend are facing felony charges for allowing a nine-year-old to drive them home because they were too drunk. Amanda. I like how it still says allegedly. <laughs> they always got to put allegedly in there. Allegedly or reportedly are two of my least favorite words in the entire universe. They got to cover their ass, though. Mm -hmm. Always got Amanda Egbert and her boyfriend, James Roth, are accused of neglect and second-degree reckless endangering safety. Police were alerted about erratic driving on rural roads. Uh, Deputy Jeff Hahn told the court there was also an 11th month old baby strapped into a car seat in the vehicle. He continued, quote, as the nine year old exited the truck, it was still running and in drive when Mr. Roth was sitting in the truck by himself. He turned the ignition off and the truck began rolling backwards down the hill. I jumped in the truck to hit the brakes put the truck in park. He also added that both adults were highly intoxicated and Mr. Ross' pre preliminary breath test was more than three times the legal driving limit. Oh, the, the deputy, man, he had a fun night. Yeah, it's like when you pull the car over and a nine-year-old gets out, that's when you've got your pad your and you're like, how the fuck? Fuck do I write this up? This isn't in the book. 
This is in nobody's book. Where, where where does this even fall? <laughs> I'm reading that. Apparently, he drove it for miles. Man. <laughs> what, what do you think he was practicing on? Do you think it was Mario Kart? Or do you think it was like, <laughs> in USA? I don't see a blue shell anywhere. I don't understand. <laughs> and the yellow thing is... Is that a banana peel? Oh, wait, it's a cone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, it's Jesus. Uh, Look, I understand. Don't drink and drive. Perfectly fine. But this is not the solution. This really is not how you fix this drunken driving problem. And you know, we would actually fix this right away. Child labor Uber. Just like little kids pulling... <laughs> They would not involve their child. Just you're, give some other kid to do it. You're laughing, but you forget that Uber is a terrible company. Oh, no, I hate Uber. I did a four-part series about how much I do not like Uber. No, I, I have very poor opinions about how Uber treats so the drivers. Th this has probably already been pitched at some board meeting. It's like, you know what? There's all those kids out there. They like them some Grand Theft Auto. Can we cash in on that somehow? Maybe? Is that, is that an option? I don't know. No, it's not. I mean... We could, but then we might all go to prison. Yeah. But we're white collars, so we may get off with a warning. So we're going to have to weigh the benefits and the risks, you guys. I think we need to do a focus group. Oh, lady just get in the channel. I don't have a license officer, but I do have a picture I made in art class with my <laughs> name on it. See, this is the sun. And this is me, and this is mommy. <laughs> and this is our, this is the picture of the car that I'm driving. <laughs> Child, that car is a unicorn. Exactly! <laughs> <laughs> and I, of course, the first question here is, how did he reach the battles? I'm a little impressed oh with this Oh my god, game. how did he reach the battles? Is he just like a giant child? Maybe. I'm, or was I'm, he just like kind of like slumped in the back, slumped down in the seat and just like not even looking over? And maybe the dad was like, no, no, go right, go right. You're doing, you're doing great. Doing great. Doing great, kid. I believe in you. I believe in you. I, I believe in you. So, yeah, that's that's uh, so what have we learned this week? We, we've learned that um, don't drink and drive. Good. Designated driver kind of needs to be someone who is legally allowed to drive. You, you, you were halfway there. You were <laughs> halfway to coming out of this one. We've learned that, that, that apparently pooping in a pool is is a mystery. That that one just, that we need to solve. We we gotta solve and that I, one. Yeah, that is imperative. Learn that sometimes your minimalist art needs to be just a wee bit more suggestive and a wee bit less suggestive. Um, because <laughs> then we get year of the butt fucking. We've learned that don't park on a lake. What is just uh, no ice is not a parking lot. What is no don't. But what if you're like only one car still? Like two cars. No, no, three. Three is the maximum. That Maybe is, four. That is like insurance roulette. No. We've learned that maybe just a badge is does not entitle you to harass people for sexual gratification. Or you can just get rid of the sexual gratification part and just keep the first half of that sentence. Yeah, a badge does not entitle you. Hey, there we go. The badge does not entitle you, but, you know. We've all learned something today, boys and girls. And finally, we've learned, don't, don't, don't throw, don't throw wildlife, live animals through the drive through window. It's not going to win you any friends. Uh, you may have learned that. No, I just learned how I can get away with it. <laughs> I'm teaching the well, wrong. Rule one, train the alligator first. This, this, these are the wrong lessons. <laughs>